welcome to the video on time domain specifications. These specifications refer to the performance indices of the step response system, which means whatever my control system is given a step input, how the system is going to respond. Those specifications are known as time domain specifications. So basically they are part of the design requirements and the transient response characteristics to a unit step input is specified based on five types. You have delay time which is specified as PD, you have a rise time which is PR, you have a peak time TP, you have a peak overshoot or maximum overshoot MP and then a settling time TS. So let's see the graph. This represents the response of an underdamped second order system. As you can see, the response starts from zero and it is reaching a peak and then gradually settling down. So, from zero and this one shows its steady state only. So, from zero to 0 0.5, which means zero to 50 percent, at that only time we are going delay time in the media. One and one value like it and all the time in the rise time no like yeah peak value like it and all the time in the peak time no like yeah that will be our peak value like steady state no more to highest peak value ni and all the peak overshoot or any maximum overshoot and finally the time it takes to you know get settled that is known as the settling time so the basic definition wise no but yeah. Delay time is the time taken for the response to reach to 50 percent is the final value for the very first time. Okay. Rise time is the time taken for the response to raise from 0 to 100 percent age again for the first time. We have to represent the underdamped system. We consider it from 10 to 90 percent age. And if it is a critically damped system, we take it as 5 to 95 percent age. Peak time is the time taken by the response to reach to a peak value the very first time. Or you can say peak overshoot like it on the time. Then again, the peak overshoot in P, it was defined as the ratio of maximum peak value to the final value where the maximum value is measured from the final value. So if C of infinity represents my final value and C of TP is the maximum value, peak overshoot is going to be C TP minus C infinity by C infinity. So generally it is expressed in percentage. So it is percentage NT is equal to CTP minus C infinity by C infinity into 100. And the settling time T is defined as the time taken by the response to reach and stay within a specified error. Okay. It is usually expressed as percentage is the final value and the usual tolerable error is 2% to 5%. Now we need to uh, derive the all these specifications and uh, you have the derivation for the for the time domain specification. Delay time in Ampilia, rise time, peak time, overshoot in settling time. So rise time at the first equation of LG Olavana, basic one step response of the second order system in the case of the underdamped case. Manslava Tavari is in the video work on the top second order system in the video. Then T equal to TR on one of the so substitute your TS TR. And at that time, you know, output responses at the C of TR is going to be 1. So, you are substituting your C of TR is equal to 1. So, what happens? You get 1, 1 and cancel out. So, E raised to minus zeta or product on 0. Okay. E raised to another exponential term, we know it can never be 0. So, what happens? Sine of omega d TR plus theta should be equal to 0. Which means, uh, sine of something should be equal to 0. It means, your phi can take the value n phi. Okay, 0, 1, pi, 2, pi, 3, pi. So, in general, we can take it as n is equal to 1, and omega d t, t r plus theta should be equal to pi, or you can say omega d t r is equal to pi minus theta. So, the rise time t r is pi minus theta by omega d. Omega d is equal to the term, the damped natural frequency, which is omega n in the root of 1 minus zeta square. Now, peak time t p is equal to now, the expression for peak time turning in the um, C of t should be differentiated with respect to t and then you should equate it to 0. So, I am going to find out d by dt of C of t. Equate t equal to tp and put it equal to 0. So, again, the first step response in the equation is 2. You are going to differentiate it with respect to t. And once you differentiate it, you are going to, uh, you are substituting omega d is equal to omega n root of 1 minus theta square before you differentiate, okay. 
ഇപ്പൊ ഡിഫറൻഷിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്തു ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് പ്യോർലി റീ അറേഞ്ച്മെന്റ് ആണ് സൈൻ ഓഫ് ഒമേഗ ഡി ടി പ്ലസ് തീറ്റ ഒരുമിച്ച് വന്നു കോൾസ് ഓഫ് ഒമേഗ ഡി ടി പ്ലസ് തീറ്റ വന്നു യു ആർ ടേക്കിംഗ് ദ റൂട്ട് ഓഫ് ആ കോൺസ്റ്റന്റ് ടേംസ് വെളിയിലോട്ട് എടുത്ത് ഇൻസൈഡ് യു ഹാവിങ് ആ ആൻഡ് അഗെയിൻ നമ്മള് ആ നോട്ട് നമ്മൾ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചത് നമ്മൾ അതിന്റെ പോലത്തെ പ്രീവിയസ് സെക്കൻഡ് ഓർഡർ സിസ്റ്റത്തിന്റെ സ്ലൈഡിൽ ഒരു റൈറ്റ് ആംഗിൾ ട്രയാങ്കിൾ കാണിക്കേണ്ട റൈറ്റ് ആംഗിൾ ട്രയാങ്കിൾ നമ്മൾ കോസ്തീറ്റിക്കും സൈന്റിഫിക്കും ഒരു വാല്യൂ കൊടുക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഇതിനെ Since the exponential term cannot be equal to zero, sine of omega d t p should be equal to zero, which means again sine phi zero on a condition is pi. So omega d t p will be equal to pi. So your peak time will be pi by omega d. Ah, uh, triangle would have come to turn out. Ah, sine theta root of omega d t p square and cos theta theta. The next derivation is for peak power shoot. That's upon all is CPP minus T by CPP to 100 on it. So again, step response is taken. T equal to infinity substitute to C of infinity. So that is equal to, you're getting it as 1. Okay, because you have the expression E raised to minus infinity in the term. So 0 here again, so it will be 1. Here T equal to TP, I'm already mumbled the expression in the length sign of omega DTP plus TT here again. TP and I am substituting as pi by omega d and on rearrangement you are getting the answer as 1 plus again a right angle triangle and all this thing you see here again you are getting the answer as 1 plus so uh, 1 plus e raised to minus eta by by root of 1 minus eta squared so substituting that your 1 gets cancelled and your final expression is percentage mp is e raised to minus eta by root of 1 minus eta squared into 100 the final derivation is for the settling time ts So you have two components of the second order system: the decaying exponential component and the sensorial component. So, uh, for in this case of the settling time, we are not going or we are not bothered about the sensorial component. So the settling time will be always decided by the exponential component. Okay. So we are going to take the exponential component and it is found out by equating them to percentage tolerance errors. And in the definition, we said it's for two percent and five percent. So first we'll try for two percent tolerance error. So t equal to tp, you are taking the expression and it is equal to 0.02. So I am taking the natural log on both sides. You will get it as minus zeta omega and t is equal to ln 0.02. So your final t is will be 4 by zeta omega n. Similarly, we are going to do it for the, uh, what you say, 5% error. And on 5% error, you are similarly getting it as t is equal to 3 by zeta omega n. So in general, if I take the time constant t equal to 1 by zeta omega n, then the settling time t is for 2 percentage error is 4 t, and for 5 percentage error will be 3 t. So in general, if you have a specified percentage error, the settling time will be t is equal to natural log of percentage error divided by t. The settling time is you can see inversely proportional to the damping ratio. So as zeta increases, your settling time is going to decrease. So just uh, I have the four derivation, the final expressions together: the rise time, pi minus theta by omega d, and the peak time pi by omega d, and then the percentage overshoot as well as the settling time. Thank you.